Hello, fellow painters. You're at Painting with Joe. We're in scritching part two. So today I'm scritching uh, the same painting that we were working on yesterday. And I am going to grab a brush, an angle brush. Let me see. I like angle brushes. This is a different brand angle brush. The principle's the same. See, it's at an angle. So it cuts off at an angle. Look, I got paint on my hands already. I swear I have paint on my hands all the time. All right. We have to paint in. Yesterday we painted in this part. Today we're going to paint in the bottom of the lake. The At least the part. We're going to end up painting over some of this. This is a very similar painting that I do in art lessons. And we're going to put some rocks in there and... Who knows? We're making it up as we go, so I'm not exactly sure what, what all we're going to put in there. At the moment, I've got an idea, but... So I'm going to spin this around. Right now I'm just using ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is kind of almost an unnatural color, but I like the intensity. It's intense. It really, uh, really stands out. When you thin it out, though, you get a really nice blue, too. Uh, ultramarine has such a broad range. It, um, as I remember right, I think it comes from the lap... It's, I think it's all chemically induced now, but I think it uh, came from lapis lazuli or something like that out of um, Brazil and Portugal. I think the same rocks before the continent split up. Um, it's a purplish rock. Purple-blue. Really, really expensive to make it that way. I believe everything's made now through some um, petrochemical process. So if they, uh, if they ban fossil fuels, we're going to be painting everything with, uh, well, we're not. We're, we're, we won't have any color. It's going to be a problem. That, and, then, and, and if you cancel mining, if you stop all mining, no more titanium white, no more cobalt blue, no, you know, all that stuff. Although they don't really use cobalt in cobalt blue. It's a hue. If they made the real stuff out of real cobalt, uh, it would be ridiculously expensive. You'd have to have a whole bunch of little slave children in Africa mining it and then selling it to the Chinese. But I digress. So here we go. So all I'm doing is I'm working on blending colors together. Blue and white. We're trying to get a gradient, kind of gradients going from here down. But we've got some flowing darker tones in here. And you pretty much can do whatever you want, whatever you, whatever makes you, you happy. And you really can't screw it up. All you got to do is wait for it to dry and then start over. Which is a problem if it's a really, really big painting and you have to like completely repaint it. But that's kind of rare. Why would you, why would that happen? All right. Good enough there. We're going to add a little bit of brown to the bottom. You go brown on blue, ugh. But brown on blue, when you go back and forth with it, when you blend it in, it becomes a new color and if you add white to it it becomes silver and starts silverizing and gray it's a gray silver kind of color it makes a pretty neat color when you're all done very very sophisticated looking it's not just your primaries red blue and yellow you know or cmyk and sometimes y no that's that's vowels so and then we add a little bit of white to blend the blue to the silvery gray that I just created. And you're gonna add a little bit of water. So I, I stuck my brush in water and gave it a little bit of extra water there. And I'm gonna add some more brown. So if you notice with painting, you kind of, it's like, it's like driving a bobcat. Well, probably a lot of you have not driven a bobcat. But once you learn the controls on a skid steer loader, you got your arms moving and your feet moving, 
you don't pay any attention to it anymore. You don't even have to think. It just it just goes that way. And so when you're painting, you know you need something darker. You just grab it and go darker. Initially, you're going, well, geez, what do I do now? And, and eventually, you just uh, start slapping colors in there and see what happens. Now, obviously, if you slap in yellow on here, everything's going to turn green because of the blue. And it's not going to be the greatest green because there's a purple element inside this, too. Well, it might be a darker green. So, but nonetheless, uh, just kind of slap colors, get going with them. I'm taking a little bit of that grayness up into the blue here. Because a lot of times you'll see kind of a gray, grayish, silverish, blue feel on a lake. We're painting feelings here. We're not painting colors. Which is kind of true. Sign painters paint colors. Artists paint feelings. The sign painter just has to get the, the point across. I'm going to cheat a little. I put a little bit of indigo in there because I'm becoming a huge indigo fan. When I was a kid, I used to hear about indigo. I think that was a hippie color. You know, and I, I grew up during the hippies. I don't know. You always heard about indigo, indigo, indigo. And so now I've become a, oh, I must be a hippie. See, these are old man hippie hands. So what I'm doing is I'm reworking this because I don't like the way that turned out. So I add white to kind of bring the tone up. And then you're going to go back and get some blue, add a little bit of blue in there. The blue is going to have a darkish feel because of the brown that we mixed in. Then we add a little bit of white, get it all to flow together, put it up to that island or point. It could be a point, I don't know, maybe it's an island, who knows. And we kind of stop there. So and if you don't like it, I don't care. It's not that critical. I may change it again later. It might bug me. So now we're going to pick up a little bit of green. We're going to go over here and scritch in the green that would make up the branches on white pines. And this is a little bit more of an intense green. The color I should be using would be sap green or... There's a hooker's green. It's more of a darker brownish green. Or I could mix a little bit of brown in with this too, just to tone that down. Or I could mix in a little bit of uh, indigo, just to give it a little bit more depth. So not all the branches are gonna be green. The, the ones that are on the sun side will be greenest. And where the sun will be, will also have, it'll be brighter. So if you haven't signed up yet, you can sign up for lessons. It starts in October. You still got some time. I haven't sent out the sign up sheet yet, but that's coming. Give it time here. I'll get it out most likely this week. And we'll be taking heaven people sign up. And there is an enrollment fee. It's 10 lessons, 10 two hour classes online for a hundred dollars. And then you can buy the paint set for about $42 shipped. If you pick it up, it's only $32. It's going to be a fun class. It's going to be me talking, you watching, and painting along with Joe. That's me. I see uh, Lindsay Keene from Ely got the uh, painting at the Prospector uh, loop fundraiser yesterday for the ATV trail. That was pretty exciting. That was a painting I did for, uh, I donated for them uh, as a fundraiser. And uh, that was pretty good. So she's supporting the, the organization and everybody's happy.
So now, if you notice, I'm not doing any stroking with the brush. I'm just scritching. I'm just tapping it in. So I call this tapping when you just go tap, 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 tap. And so we tap this one in too a little bit here, like so. Maybe give it a little bit of peeking through sunlight because it's behind these two trees. Maybe it could be further back and it depends on how dramatic we want that tree to look. So you go up here and add, add some branches, pick up a little bit of indigo and put that in there with it just to make them a little more distinct. That's a little too distinct. So now we take some green and we undistinct it, make it taller. And if you screw up, just go a little higher, make more, more tree. And then just blend it all in, kind of hide, hide it in there. It's all about creating the illusion. So now this is kind of yellow in there. I'm, I'm using a yellow ochre and green. Yellow ochre is kind of a yellow brown. Kind of looks like partridge poop. In fact, it's very similar. Actually, raw sienna is closer to that. And so we'll add some vegetation down here. And when I say partridge, for those of you watching far away, I mean roughed grouse. I'm using the colloquial. Colloquial. Uh, definition of partridge uh, of ruffed grouse because ruffed grouse I find too hard to say and it's kind of highbrow what do you got I got a ruffed grouse and all the rest of us well we got a partridge so I, I think that's the problem right there no I'm, I'm making that up but it could be the problem I, I don't know so now I just added too much here because the branches wouldn't go up that high got to remember trees distant branches are individual branches nonetheless so you'd see them and i'm also showing the sunlight coming from this perspective right here zoom so add some more brush down here and some trees we'll give some green to them even though they're dark and in the shadows we let the lake peek through on the other side. Maybe we'll put, uh, we'll just look at it. We'll put some muskeg here. In fact, we could put a lot of muskeg there. We get a different brush for that though. And we go with a flat brush. We wet it first. I like to wet it first. Then we pick up some of the, this stuff and we go like that. And maybe a little bit of white in there. See how that looks. Lighten it up. And as it gets closer to us, it, the, the brush gets deeper. I'm going to put a little bit of black on there. Just to see how it, you kind of experiment and see what it looks like. So now this brush is a really refined tip brush. Sometimes it helps to pull up from the bottom so that you get those fibrous tips because it makes a perfect, almost a perfect uh, block when it's dropped that way. I could use the angle brush, but the angle brush blends. I don't want to blend. I want some diversification between these things here. Now, at this point, we determine, are we up in the air? Are we on the ground? We're kind of up in the air a little bit based on how we're looking at that tree. Now, you got to remember, too, this is kind of white, and the white is going to dry darker. So we can make the grass go out 
way far into the water. If we want, and give it some bottom. Let's do this, pull up the top. I broke down and ordered another Mevo camera so that you can see my ugly mug while we're painting. So you can see my facial expressions. You can feel what I'm feeling. Well, not really. And you don't want to feel that. No feeling. There'll be no feeling of anything. Let's do this. Put some reflection down. This is just a fast, loose painting. And we may add a rock. Or add some rocks right here in the water. Rock on the water. That was a song. Add some more blue-gray mix and give the rock a reflection. Put another rock in here. Just stick rocks in there. And then we'll make a rock on the point here. All kinds of things to hit with your motor. Or crash your canoe into. Depends on your watercraft. Kayaks, meh. So there we go, we'll pick up a little bit of blue, give the rock a reflection. We're going to rock around the clock. We're going to take this tree right here and scratch in a little bit of detail to it. I'm using some black. Basically, I'm just looking for a darker color. So it's more defined. Scratch this one in. We've already hit it with a little bit of green, but I want some black. I want it to be more distinct. And go over here, like so. And our rocks are starting to form. Tomorrow, we'll add more rocks and more details to this little itty-bitty painting. So this is it for today, folks. Painting Another painting in Joe's scritching part two has been completed for now. We'll add some more details to this tomorrow and more details in here and probably a tree and maybe a loon. Who knows? I don't know. We're making it up as we go. So scritching part two is complete. Join me tomorrow at Joe Baltich Art in Facebook. You can follow me there or you can go to JoeBaltichArt.com. I'm not there, but you can see my artwork. So, all right. I will see you then. Bye-bye.